Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Monitoring and Troubleshooting Networking. So let's talk a little bit about how we check things out on the network side. Uh, most of this is fairly simple. Really, a lot of what I do is within the VI client itself, but some people like to use a CLI command, so who am I going to say? Uh, most people that know me know I often prefer CLI, but eh, with VMware, I do a lot of stuff through the VI client. But there's a number of commands. So there's a couple of older commands, like the VI config commands, that we don't really see uh, on the host anymore, but can still be used with the VMA. So that's VI config, vSwitch, Nix, VMK Nix, route, and DNS. And they basically do what you think they would do. vSwitch is your vSwitch configuration. Nix lists your physical Nix. VMK Nix is for creating and managing VM kernels. Route displays your routing table. And DNS is your DNS configuration. But now we pretty much use the ESX CLI network command. Uh, it just makes things simpler. Now we have everything under a single tree. So that's probably what I'd recommend that you use. Let's take a look at a few of those just to walk through it. So here I'm logged into the VMA. And so we can use the VI commands with all the VI configs. So let's do VIFP target and we'll do Optimus. So we can do things like viconfig-dns, it'll pull the help, well, it'll pull the actual DNS information, which has our DNS server.201, the domain name and the host name, dash dash help, and it gives you everything that you need to know. Uh, viconfig nix, dash l for list, and it lists all of the physical nix in the host, my four one gigs and my two 10 gig nix. So those are pretty handy commands, but probably going to be using ESX CLI. So we do ESX CLI, and this is one of my uh, vSphere hosts here. I can do it via the VMA. We've done that. We did a lesson on the V, or we'll do a lesson on the VMA. The difference is, is that if I do something like ESX CLI network here, it's fairly quick. Whereas if I do it here, there's more of a delay. So I find myself SSHing into my host to demo these most often. So we can do things like NIC list just list which shows the same information so we can do that we can do nick set set some information such as wake on land support speed port nickname anything duplex anything like that so let's see we can do vswitch commands we can do on the dvs which isn't a whole lot they only really display information so you can do list you can do standard commands and here you can add a vSwitch, list your vSwitches, remove your vSwitches. Pretty simple. Again, I will come in here to pull information. If I'm creating a vSwitch, I'm usually going to do it through the VI client because I'm faster. But you can give it to ports, the switch name, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see, VM, vSwitch, uh, diagnostics. Not a whole lot here. Basically, it's just ping. That's kind of funny that they, it always makes me laugh that they do that. Uh, IP information. So, if you want to do things like DNS, uh, let's see, DNS search server and list that as well. Or you can do search. Again, same you think. VI config, I think, is a little bit easier. You can look at the route table. Oops. Uh, IP and it shows your routing table. So again, a lot of stuff you can do here with the commands. I can't really think of much you need to do with a CLI that you can't do in the in the UI uh, anymore. But again, if you're one of those people that prefer that, you have full capability. Log files, and eh, we've talked about log files, uh, but each vSphere host has a log file, uh, or each vSphere host has a bunch of log files, really. DHCP issues are in var log, dhclient.log. Network driver and device type issues are in VM kernel, which we've talked about a, you know, a bunch of times in this course. But you'll see all sorts of things in there. Uh, vCenter connection issues are in the vpxa.log. So that is kind of network related. If it's having a problem talking to vCenter, check that log file. So one of the things in the blueprint is the net dbs command, which amuses me because it's an unsupported command. It even tells you that when you run the command, uh, that it is unsupported. So I'm, uh, I'm against putting unsupported things on an exam uh, for obvious reasons. Um, 
And and so I'm I'm a little curious of why they did that. In, in fact, when you do your VCDX, they tell you not to do something unsupported because it's it's going to be pretty much an instant mark against you. But here we are. But the real thing is is that the net DVS command is really for pulling information. So I, I find it hard to believe they would even ask you a question on that exam using this because it's just pulling information. Nothing you can't pull elsewhere uh, just does it. It's really meant for VMware support. It's terribly documented. Um, very, you know, you can Google it. There's a few people that have a little bit of information, but overall, it's it's just terribly documented. And running the command with no options gives you a huge amount of data. So, like I said, best used for displaying information, not for setting it. And again, I'm just I think it's just weird that they even list this. So, if you're on NetDVS, what you didn't see was about 30 pages. Well, maybe not that much, but a bunch of information about my distributed switch that I've got on this host. Let me go to more. I'm not going to read through all this. There's a ton of stuff in here, uh, but you can, you know, look at it and see. Yeah, DVS dash dash help, and here's all the stuff you can do. So you can set teaming, uh, VMK NIC IP, miscellaneous information, uh, uplink information, DB port, specify port, pool configurations. There's a ton of stuff you can do, but again, it's a uh, very very poorly documented. And let's see here. Yeah, see, there's so much help stuff. So first thing it says is trying to show you what I want to show you. Here it is. Net DBS doesn't recognize. I guess well, it doesn't like help. If, it, if you give it something, it doesn't recognize it. Spits out help. Warning: This is an unsupported command. Use it at your own risk. Sounds like something I want to be tested on. But you can go through here. You can add a new distributed switch. You can delete a DB switch. You can add or delete a port. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do here, but it's not uh, built for end-user use. It's built for VMware support to use. So again, if they tell you to create a distributed switch, don't use NetDVS to do it. Use the UI to do it. But it is on the blueprint, so look at it in your lab, um, and then I would probably forget about it, to be completely honest. Private VLANs. Troubleshooting private VLANs is fairly simple. First of all, make sure you have all the requirements. Really by that, I mean things like Enterprise Plus licensing, which is is a requirement, but you can't even try to configure it without a distributed switch. And you have to have Enterprise Plus for distributed switch. And to do, you know, to do any of this, that's kind of a, a given. PV lands must be configured on your physical switches. I mentioned this in the lesson on that, that the Nexus 1000V can do it without physical switch support. But the VMware distributed switch requires physical switch support. Uh, must be trunking all needed VLANs to from the host. That includes your, you know, your primary VLAN, your promiscuous, along with your community and isolated. So make sure you're doing that. You know, it's really just confirming that you define the VLANs correctly in the distributed switch and then map them correctly into the port group. So you saw that when we did the lesson. You go into the main switch, go to the private VLANs, you set what your promiscuous mode is, VLAN is, and then your isolated in communities. Then when you go to each create each port group, you specify those there. A great way to test this is kind of like what I did in the lab for that lesson, where my switch here, I got a Cisco SG300 in my lab, it doesn't do private VLANs. So the way I did that demo was I moved all my VMs to a single host. So it never left the host, never went to the physical switch. If that works like you would expect, kind of like we did where we couldn't ping things in isolated, but we could ping things in community and all that, if that works on a single host but doesn't work as you spread VMs across multiple hosts, you got a problem on your physical switch config or some problem with mismatched trunking. Nine times out of ten, it's a problem on the physical switch because it can be rather complex to configure that on the physical switches. It varies between switch manufacturers, and that's where the breakdown usually occurs. So again, just vMotion everything to a single host, check it, and if that works, you know it's physical. If that doesn't work, check the VLAN mappings in your port groups and in the overall distributed switch. VM kernel interfaces aren't that complex. Really all you need to do is confirm VLAN tagging and ping to check connectivity. A couple of commands, you've got the vi-config vmk nic command, ESX CLI network IP interface for local configuration, uh, you can do that as well as remote from the VMA, but again, a lot of people still use the VI config commands. But you can take a look at those, so let's see. 
SXCLI network IP interface. And it'll, let's see, we'll do list. And it'll show our VM kernel. So I got VMK1 and VMK2. You can add if you want to. Uh, da, da, da. You have to give it a bunch of information. You can remove if you want to, and you have to give it the name of that one as well. Uh, you can set information. So you can set, like, do you want to enable it? Uh, the name. If you want to change the MTU, you can do that here, which, again, you can also do in the uh, user interface. So, you know, just know how to test those. The big issue is um, look at your VM kernels. Make sure the IPs are right. Make sure you can ping things that you think you should be able to ping. Uh, and just check the overall status. I mean, this one, I have Jumbo Frames enabled, MTU 9000. That one I do not. Uh, just look at your information. I mean, it's not a whole lot to this, but it's worth noting. Oops. Uh, get. It'll show the VM kernels, the IP, the net mask type. Usually it's static. Uh, you can do DHCP. But that'll show your IP mappings and make sure those are correct. I mean, other than that, there's not a whole lot to really check. Um, you know, just confirm everything looks good. You can use DCUI to test this too. So you can log in there. You can do pings and things from the DCUI. I prefer to do that just directly from the console. How hard is that, right? So either way, just, just use that. And don't forget the var log, VM kernel log, and the VMK warning. I mean, really... Um, if your VM kernels are working but the wrong IP configuration, uh, you may have a problem. Occasionally, uh, if you set MTU wrong and it's uh, not matching correctly, you will see frame dropped messages due to MTU in the VM kernel, so it's worth looking at. But nine times out of ten, it's just an IP configuration that's wrong, or you don't have the VLAN tagging set correctly, and the vSphere host doesn't know that stuff's wrong, so there's nothing logged. DNS? Eh. I mean, we looked at this a minute ago, VI config DNS, VI config route, or you can use the ESX CLI command as well. Uh, you can also do it via the VI client for host configuration software, DNS, and routing. So pick my host, configuration software, DNS, and routing, and here's our settings. So make sure your DNS is correct, your host name, your domain, make sure your server's right, and then you've got your routing table there for your VM kernel. Again, nothing too complicated here. Just confirm that is all set correctly. Or again, the DCUI. You can set all your DNS and your routing uh, as well as test it right from the DCUI. Troubleshooting commands. We looked at some of these. ESXCLI network IP DNS server. ESXCLI network IP DNS search and ESX network IP route. We looked at those in a minute ago when I was on the host. Again, you can use that to set or get the information. ESX top, a uh, big thing here is to look for drop packets. So drop transmits, drop receives. You can also chart this in the vCenter performance charts. ESX top shows a percentage there. Uh, vCenter shows an actual number. So if it's a very low percentage or you want to run it over a while, maybe you want to look at the vCenter performance charts and look at the total number. Often see drops due to queue congestion. Virtual NICs have a queue if that feels. Then the vSwitch starts a queue. If that feels, then frames start dropping. So uh, if you do see frames dropped, it just means something's too busy. And check your NICs. Make sure you're using the right kind of NICs, good server class NICs, things like that. Uh, and look at your configuration. But, you know, usually it's drop transmit and drop received are what you want to look at. And I'll show that to you real quick since we're here. ESX top. And it's in for network. And, you know, packet transmit, megabit transmit, packet received, and then drop packet transmit and drop packet receive. So normally you want those to be 0000s zero, 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 all the time. Uh, if you are having a problem, that's one thing to look at. Any other fields? Uh, let's see. You can actually show the physical NIC. Uh, you can do multicast broadcast. That's not a big deal but it will specify things like your speed, your duplex, uh, your physical NIC, so what each thing is actually using and how it's been hashed, that's pretty interesting. And so if you are seeing drops or issues, you can match that up to physical NIC. Can be caused by heavily constrained CPU, that's a good point um, that I put on here and about forgot. Basically, the CPU is what moves frames around in these queues, 
and gets them ready to go. If you're really CPU constrained, it can cause it to drop frames because there's just no cycles left to do it. That's fairly rare, uh, but I have seen it done. But again, usually, usually performance is so bad in your VMs, you're trying to fix that for other reasons. Port mirroring, we looked at this. Uh, it's in another lesson again. Uh, it's worth reviewing here, but you create port mirroring sessions on the main distributed switch, and again, you can enable them or disable them at any time. The source is a distributed switch port number, so you'll need to look that up in your ports list. Destination is a VDS port number if you're doing another VM, or a physical uplink if you're passing traffic up. To capture traffic between VMs, they need to be on the same host. So that's an issue. Uh, a lot of people think that you can mirror traffic from one, a VM on one host to VM on another, and that's not true. Uh, so they need to be on the same host. With 5.1, we can do what's called ER span, um, encapsulated remote span, where we can capture traffic on a VM on one host and send it to a VM on another host right using the VDS. Unfortunately, we can't do that on 5.0. So make sure using something like a DRS group affinity rule to keep those guys together in case DRS tries to vMotion them around. The DCUI and the SXI shell. Uh, DCUI allows for manual config and testing. Very useful if you strand a host. I have done that. Uh, you can do a base rebuild of the network, set major options such as IP, DNS, routing, VLAN, and physical NICs. ESXi shell gives you access to local CLI, which we covered, and you can use those commands to further rebuild the networking if you need to. Normally, I just tell DCUI to rebuild the networking. There is an option there to do that and it's kind of a slash and burn. And one thing I often do is just have the DCUI completely rebuild the networking. There is an option in there for it. It gives you a big scary warning, but it will rebuild the first vSwitch, get your management VM kernel back online, and then usually I reconnect to it through the VI client or connect it into vCenter and rebuild my networking using that. But you can get on the CLI, and you can do it that way if you want to. Just up to you. I find it's quicker to do it through the UI. But that's it for this lesson. There's not a ton of stuff to, to do as far as troubleshooting and monitoring the virtual networking. I mean, it's really the biggest things. If you've got to ask me what I see is most common, it's things like trunking being set incorrectly. Uh, we talked about that heavily in, in the earlier lesson. Uh, for port mirroring, it's, it's trying to mirror across hosts, which we can't easily do right now. Uh, so make sure you set your source and destination via port number right. Know your commands, but really... I can't think of anything significant that you can't do in the VI client that you'll need a CLI for, so I wouldn't fill up your brain too much with those. Uh, ESX top is good, but uh, you know it's mainly just looking for performance issues. So for the exam, uh, just kind of review private VLANs and how to configure those. If you want to test them during the exam, it's something you can test. VMotion them to one host to make sure that works. Uh, make sure that you know how to do port mirroring, know how to get your IDs, things like that. But that's really all I can think of for this that, you know, is really testable. So that's it for this one. I look forward again to seeing you on the next lesson.